Welcome today. We are going to practice. Oh, I'll do you uh, welcome today. We are going to practice an intermediate level class, uh, working towards the arm balance to Tibasana. And uh, BK Sohu will talk about arm balances as they bring joy and they bring courage. So we could use a little bit of that right now. The first pose that we're going to do is Utita Parsha Parsana, and you're going to make sure that you have a block. I'm going to put the block on the medium height behind. And just before you do the pose, because we all know the pose, I'm going to be introducing the area that the area is called the, the groins. And so with your feet apart, you can, the groins are right at the root of the inner part of the thigh. And there are three groins. And they really kind of emanate between the front inner thigh, the middle of the inner thigh, and the back of the inner thigh. So watch for those instructions as I, as I show the first. When we come into the pose, we're going to be working the first groin, the top groin, which is just above this great cable of, of muscle here. And the front groin is going to go up and over like this, right? That is the direction of the front groin. So let's go ahead and do that action first. So bring your feet to Tadasana, bend the legs, step or jump to the side. And then turn to your right side. You can bring your hands to your hips for now. Now as you bend your right leg, can you move your top groin up and over your right quadricep, almost as if you're taking your outer right thigh downwards. And then maintain that as you bring your hand onto the block. Left hand can stay at your left hip for now. Continue with this movement, taking your top groin up and over your right thigh, so that your outer right thigh and your outer right hip go downwards towards the floor. And then take your left arm up and over, pull from your left arm, inhale and come on all the way up out of the pose. And then take your other side. So take, turn your right foot in, your left leg out. Now again, bring your hands to your hips and watch this movement. Your left groin goes up and over. The front groin, the area we call the top groin here, up and over your left quadricep so that you can bring your outer left thigh down and bring your left hand down onto the block. Now you can continue to move this inner part of your left thigh, right in the area we call the top groin, up and over your quadricep, down so that your outer left hip moves downwards towards the floor, your outer left thigh moves downwards towards the floor. And then take your top arm up and over, and then pull from your top arm, inhale and come up all the way up. And then turn your feet, bring your hands to your hips. If you're using a block, you can of course move it to the other side. Okay, so with your feet apart, I'm going to talk about the second groin. Those of you watching in the video, I'll use my hands to show. Turn to your right side again. You turn your left foot in, your right leg out. The top groin is where it is. It moves up and over the quadricep. The middle groin traces the line all the way from that cable up to the left pelvic head. So this one goes this way, the middle groin goes up and over, and the front groin goes, the top groin goes up and over your thigh. So you're going to do both of these directions as you come into the pose. Keep your hands on your hips, and as you exhale and bend, move your front top right groin up and over your quadricep, and now move your middle groin up towards your left pelvic head and do both at the same time. And then maintain that as you bring your right hand down onto the block. And can you increase the action of the top groin and move your outer right thigh down. And then lift from your middle right groin to your left pelvic head, up and across your abdomen. Straighten your left leg and take your left arm straight up and over. And then pull from your top arm, inhale and come on all the way up. Take your second side. Hands on the hips. As you bend your left leg, move your front groin, top groin up and over your quadricep, and your middle left groin up and across towards your right pelvic head. So both of these at the same time. Maintain as you bring your hand now down onto the block. And can you increase the work of your front left groin and lift it up and over your quadricep. Move your outer left thigh down. And then with your middle groin, draw it up towards your right pelvic head. Notice how it brings more weight to your outer left, outer right heel. Now take your top arm straight up and over. 
And now pull from your right arm, inhale and come on all the way up. Turn your feet, jump your legs together. So there are three groins. This front groin that we've been working with, the middle groin, and then there is the back of the groin, which we could talk about in between the two sitting bones. There's not much to see, so I'm not going to show it, but I'll talk about it when we get the pose. So let's do it one more time. Have your feet together and then bend, jump to the side. And turn your left foot in, bend your right leg and turn to the right side. Now take your two groins, the front groin, top groin, up and over your quadricep, your middle right groin up to your left pelvic head, and then maintain as you bring your hand down onto the block. Now take your left arm just straight up vertically towards the ceiling. Now the back of your groin, can you just let it release and drop downwards towards the floor? And then take your top arm up and over. So work just on your three groins, your front top right groin, up and over your right thigh, take your outer right thigh down. Your middle right groin lifts up to your left pelvic head, pull your outer left heel down. And then just at the back of your groin, right next to your sit bone, just drop it downwards towards the floor. And then pull from your top arm, inhale and come on up. Take your other side. Arms to the side this time. Exhale as you bend the leg. Again, your front top right left groin up and over your quadricep. And your middle left groin up to your right pelvic head. Exhale, come down onto the block. Take your right arm straight upwards towards the ceiling. Pause right there. The weight of your right arm will encourage the release of the back of your groin. See that your front groin continues to draw up and over your quadricep. This is stabilizing for both your knee and your hip. And then draw upwards from your left middle groin to your right pelvic head. And you'll notice it draws weight to your outer right heel. But with all of this compacting, strengthening work going on in your hips, can you now relax your groin? Take your back left groin and drop it straight downwards towards the floor. And then take your top arm further over towards the left side and now pull from your left or right arm. Inhale and come on all the way up. Turn your feet and step or jump your legs all the way together. Okay, move your blocks away to the side. Face forwards, have your feet together. We're taking wide footed pose, Prasarita Padratanasana. Bring your hands to your chest, bend and jump to the side. Now bring your hands to your hips. Turn your feet so that they face forwards. Now on your exhalation, bend forwards. Place your hands down, shoulder width apart, wrists in line with your big toes. Now extend into the outer edges of your heels. Can you work to move your front groins over the top of your quadriceps and move your outer thighs back towards the wall behind you? Lengthen the sides of your chest forwards. And now from here, what would you do to take this pose into handstand, into full arm balance? Lean a little forwards. Press from your shoulders straight downwards towards your hands. And then from here, can you lift your heels up? and lift your heels upwards towards your hips. And then take the very back of your groin, so the last part that we worked on in the previous pose, straight upwards towards the ceiling, so that your legs become lighter and your arms and your hands become stronger and heavier. So keep your back groins rising. Press your hands down, press your shoulders down towards your hands, lift upwards from your abdomen towards the ceiling, lift upwards from your groins. And then from here, on your exhalation, slowly lower your heels down. And then heel toe your feet closer together. Bring your hands to your hips and come on all the way up. Join the feet all the way together. Okay. Just take Tadasana for a moment. You can observe in this pose how the front groins as they come slightly forwards and around, wrap around your thighs towards your outer hips, that there is a compactness in your hips. 
And that if you were to continue to do that, it would almost mean that your feet and your thighs would turn outwards. Similarly, when we move the very backs of the groins and start to have a sense that we're separating our two sit bones, your upper body starts to bend forwards. The Iyengas would always say that the middle groins need to face each other. So when we have this action of the middle groins facing each other, it's just that we don't want to push the front groins too far forwards or move the back groins too far back, but that there's a balance in between the two of them. So that the middle groins, Gita would say, that the middle groins face each other like mirrors, like two mirrors, like there's an infinity. Okay, let's take the sticky mats to the wall. We're going to take the Adam Vishwanasana. So tell me what you're going to do. Yes. 
this tape, what I call this kind of 90 degree variation, like this, right? And then we can move to rise up from there, okay? One more time, one more time, just with both legs, and again, you're doing the L shape. There you go. And now, Donna, press your hands down, press your thighs up, and then take your back bones straight up and towards the ceiling, and your inner heels straight into the wall. Yeah, you did. See? Oh, yeah. All right, now, two of you in full on balance. Last time, as you look away from the wall, look upwards towards your toes, pull your collarbones upwards towards the ceiling, and then from here, maintain that, but you're having that release. Okay, and then to come on out, we'll do exactly the same thing. Right, you're just going to bend the legs, groins lifting up, groins lifting up. Don't want you to come down, you just pull, pull your feet down the wall, and then everyone can come on down this, and then going up this, and then groins up, groins up, groins up. Okay, rest into the muscle. Everybody, make 
make sure that you have a block and a sticky mat. Come to the come back to the center, and this time we're gonna see if we can, uh, you know, yeah, this is fun. Let's have the mats this way, forward and back, and that you'll have a block on the medium height. And just sit for a moment in Dandasana. Have your heels raised up on the block. So this is a straight leg pose and the feet are together. But take a moment, and you can do this one hand at a time, to adjust your thigh and your groin. So you'll take your inner thigh down, and as you lean slightly to the left, pull the back groin directly towards the wall behind you. Almost as if you're trying to come down on the inner edge of your right sit bone. Then do exactly the same thing to the other side. You can place your hands either side of your hips and press your thighs down and lift upwards through the sides of your chest. Now move your back lines directly towards the wall behind you. And see if you can't move to the inner edge of your sit bones in this pose. And now push from your inner thighs to your inner heels towards the front of the room. My understanding of the groins is right at the top of the thighs, right at the top of the inner thighs for a space about an inch and a half to two inches. There is a separation of your inner thighs as they push forwards towards your inner heels and your inner groins and back groins as they pull back towards the wall behind you. See if you can observe that separation. Okay, and then from here, come on down, bring your feet onto the floor. Now, this time, you're going to take the block and sit up on the block. Same pose, Dandasana, staff pose with your feet together to start with. And then make that adjustment again. Can you move your back groins back and your inner thighs forwards? And I'm referring to the back groins and the inner groins as sort of about the same, the same place. But you want to have a sense that you're coming to the inner edges of your sit bones and the very backs of your groins move towards the wall behind you and your inner thighs extend and push forwards towards your inner heels and now spread your toes straighten your legs press your thighs down lift your chest up take your feet now and move them to the edges of the sticky mat wide variation of dandasana now, once again, the movement of your back lines towards the wall behind you, almost as if you're trying to lift them up away from the block. And now as you bend forward, take hold of your big toes, press your thighs down, lift your waist and ribs and chest up. Now move your back groins way back and push your inner thighs way forward towards your inner heels. Chest stays lifted. Now, if you're able to, you can bend your elbows and take your elbows onto the floor. You can let go of your big toes. Now, chest forward. Hands down, chest up. Lengthen the bottom of your sternum bone to the top of your sternum bone. Now, once again, the actions for your legs and your groins. Press your thighs down and move your back groins towards the wall behind you. And push your inner thighs towards your inner heels towards the wall in front of you. See if you can get your elbows down and your forearms even. Okay, and then from here, come on all the way up and bring your legs together. Come off the block for a moment and just watch. We're going to take a Sahasa Bujasana. There'll be a couple of different setups for this pose. The basic setup will be that you will have a block and Sahasa Bujasana is one arm strength pose. So notice my left heel is raised up on the block and I bend the right leg pushing from the uh, groin back towards the knee. And you see how I take my shoulder and my knee in opposite directions. My knee goes that way and my thigh goes that way. But my shoulder has to go the other way so that I can get my leg right over the shoulder and then the hand swings back like so. Both hands are, short, are either side of the hips. Now this bent leg, the big toe, has to pull straight downwards towards the floor as if I'm trying to dip it into cold water straight down and then I press my hands down and lift the buttocks up. Now the back groins move way back towards the wall behind. Right from the back of the groins move up and back. And then I see, can I from there raise my foot up off the block? And the pose is being held by the hands as they press down, the big toe as it pulls down, but the lift of the back of the groins. 
and then we'll come on down, okay? If you know you can't get up into the pose, well, then you know you can't. <laughs> so what you're going to do is take a, take, a, take a couple of blankets and sit on a blanket, and you're going to take Mary chest and a one, okay? Okay. So have your left foot up on the block, right? Have your left foot up on the block. I would have the blankets the other way, the narrow way. So if you're not doing the sound balance, you can do Marichyasana 1, where you'll bend your left leg and then you'll turn to the right and you'll switch, right? You'll go this direction. Okay. Otherwise, left foot goes up on the block, left leg is straight, lean a little forwards, and then you'll pull your right leg up and back, and, and down it, turn, bend your left leg, straighten your right leg, and turn towards the door side. Yeah. Okay. And then from here, swing your right arm back and down, bring your left hand onto the floor. Now pull your right big toe straight downward so that you lean forwards. Press your hands down and lift your buttocks up and move your back groins way back. Right big toe goes down, back groins lift up, and then see if you can get your right, your left foot light. And then from here, come on down. So bend your left leg, right heel up onto the block. And then you'll push back from your inner thigh to your inner knee, lean forwards with your left shoulder, and then you hook the shoulder over your, uh, excuse me, leg over your shoulder. Now see that your hands are parallel. Now press your hands down, that's it, and pull your left big toe down. And then lift your buttocks up, now pull your groins back. Can you hold yourself up in this pose from the lift of the back of your groins? And then see if you can lift your right foot up as well. There we go. And then from here, come on all the way down. Take the block away. So I'm going to have you take, uh, keep those blankets then for two blocks either side. All right, two blocks either side. This next one, Dui Haska, Bujasana, just means two arm strength pose. So just watch them. Yeah, make sure that you take extra support. But just watch, and then, then I'm going to show the prop set up for here. So from a, a, a foot apart, variation of Uttanasana. I bend forwards with the torso and then I also have to bend the legs. And you can turn the feet out a little, but I have to get the shoulder underneath the back of the thigh. So I kind of push forwards with the shin and tuck my shoulder underneath and then I have to do the same thing to the other side. And then I have to clamp the knees onto the shoulders. My hands move about three, four inches behind the heels and when I start to sit back and down, what's going to help me stay up are the lift of the back groins. So I have to keep them lifted up and back as I start to take my feet off the floor. So as I press the hands down, I don't want to let the buttocks and the, and the groins go down, I have to keep them lifted. The back groins push up and back, and then I extend forwards and see if I can come from Dewey Hospital Jasana into Titibasana. Thighs down, back groins up. And then to come on out, bend the legs, lift from the backs of the groins. And then we'll come forwards like so. Okay, so you can see Andy set up here. There's a blank, two blankets and two blocks. And she's going to put her hands on the blocks. And don't need to have go of that too. All right. So do we have step? We just, we're going to do it a couple of times into Titibasana Firefly Pose. So tuck your right shoulder on your foot. And you can turn your feet out so that you can wedge your shoulders underneath. And then when you bring your hands back three, four inches onto the blocks, if you're using blocks, have your fingers over the front edge. Now clamp your knees onto your shoulders. Clamp your knees close to your shoulders. And then as you start to lower your buttocks down, take your back groins back and up or up and back. Keep the groins lifting and see if you can let your feet be light. And then pull your inner feet forward as you take your back groins back. And then slowly start to push my body to bend. <laughs> slowly start to push your inner thighs towards your inner knees to your ankles and your heels. Now lift the back groins higher. Take the backs of the groins higher. Press your thighs down. And then to come on out, you just bend your legs and lift the back groins up. And then come on all the way out. We're doing it again. Because you have another shoulder. Right? Okay, how are we doing? Left shoulder underneath first. So bend 
forwards, take your back ones up even as you come into this forward bend. And the more you can get your knees above and on top of your shoulders, the better the pose. So now clamp your legs and bring your hands three, four inches back. Now the temptation when you sit down on your arms is for the groins to drop. Don't let them drop, move them back, move them up. Just like we worked in full arm balance and Adam Krishnamasan and those standing poses we did. Move the grab back ones up and back, almost as if you're trying to separate your two sit bones. And then push your inner thighs forwards towards your inner heels. Press your hands down. Lift your chest forwards, upwards. And then to come on out, you bend your legs, keep the groins lifted, and then you'll come on all the way out through Uttanasana. And come on up. Okay. Take a variation of Supta Baddha Konasana, unsupported. So you can just bring the soles of your feet together, and you can hold on to your ankles if you can, or you can just bring your arms alongside the body. Tuck your shoulders underneath, hold on to your ankles, push your feet towards each other. So what this pose does is it gives a, a strong drawing in of your sacrum, it soothes the sacrum from the arm bouncings. And we still have strange enough the similar action of our groins. So the top front groin again kind of wraps around the quadriceps towards your outer hips and thighs. And then the middle groin releases towards your inner thighs, towards your inner knees. But can you find this back groin again and release it downwards towards the floor? Softening your abdomen, softening your front ribs, softening your face. And then release with your arms and bring your hands to your outer thighs. Bring your legs a little bit together. Roll to your right side. And we're going to take a variation of Vipritakarani. You'll bend your legs and take a block. And you see how I place it wide across the sacrum. And it's towards the lumbar side of the sacrum, but it's not on the lumbar spine at all. Sides of the chest are lifted, roll onto the tops of the shoulders. You can always hold on to your mat for stability. Now I keep the chest lifted, and then one leg at a time, I bend the leg into the chest. You can hold on to your block as well if you feel it's moving. And then I take both legs up. The chest lifts, the inner thighs lift, but the backs of the bones descend. To come on out, you can bend your legs together, chest stays lifted, and you can come down one leg at a time, or both legs at a time. Okay, then you move the block up here. Don't let have it, take a blanket. And then I have to do this too. If you feel it for me, put it under your shoulders. Just like you would do this as you want. So the block is on this wider position, so turn it so it's, yeah, it's this direction, like so. That's it. And it's towards the side of your sacrum that's closest to your lumbar, away from the tailbone. Come on down a second. It's just folded in half, so it's narrow. And it's going to go underneath your shoulders, not underneath your head. So you can have it like this. Just be here for a moment. Lift the sides of your chest up. Yeah, that's it. Roll onto the tops of your shoulders. And even in this position, have a sense that the inner sit bones, the back groins, release down. Don't scoop the block a little closer in this direction. Yeah. You can hold on to your block if need be to help, your, to help yourself get up into the pose, but you can bend your legs one at a time or both legs at a time, and then stretch your legs up. Now lift your chest. Lift the sides of your ribs. Lift the outer sides of your waist. Take 
Take your outer side waist up and let your back lines release down. Straighten your legs as you push upwards towards the inner thighs. Extend from your inner ankles towards your inner heels and push the big toe mounds towards the ceiling. Pull your outer ankles to your inner ankles. And can you balance the lift of the sides of your chest, the lift of the sides of your waist, with the release of your back lines? And then to come on out, you can bend your legs towards your chest and then come down one leg at a time or both legs at a time. Press your feet down, raise the, your buttocks up and move the block away to the side. Slide flat for a few moments. Yeah, I've done just adjust the other leg and under your head. I'm going to read a short excerpt from Pema Chodron's book, When Things Fall Apart. Intimacy with Fear is the chapter heading. Fear is a universal experience. Even the smallest insect feels it. We wade in the tidal pools and put our finger in near the soft, open bodies of sea anemones and they close up. Everything spontaneously does that. It's not a terrible thing that we feel fear when faced with the unknown. It is part of being alive, something we all share. We react against the possibility of loneliness, of death, of not having anything to hold on to. Fear is a natural reaction to moving closer to the truth. And if we commit ourselves to staying right where we are, then our experience becomes very vivid. Things become very clear when there is nowhere to escape. During a long retreat, I had what seemed to me the earth-shaking revelation that we cannot be in the present and run our storylines at the same time. It sounds obvious, but when you discover something like this for yourself, it changes you and impermanence becomes vivid in the present moment. So do compassion and wonder and courage, and so does fear. In fact, anyone who stands on the edge of the unknown, fully in the present, without reference point, experiences groundlessness. And that's when our understanding goes deeper. And we find that the present moment is a pretty vulnerable place. And it can be completely unnerving and completely tender at the same time. When we begin this exploration, we have all kinds of ideals and expectations. We are looking for answers that will satisfy a hunger we have felt for a very long time. But what we're talking about is getting to know fear, becoming familiar with it, looking at it right in the eye, not as a way to solve problems, but as a complete undoing of old ways. The truth is that when we really begin to do this, 